Hi everyone, um, I'm here again with another Designer Spotlight and today we've got Lauren Lowen. Um, she's going to introduce herself, give us a bit of a background into how she got into the business um, and we're going to just get a little bit of an inside look at how she goes about running her business. So I'll just hand over to you Lauren. Hi Nelly, it's good to be here and be talking to everyone today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I am, um, I like to call myself an artist illustrator and um, I do a variety of illustration work and publishing and editorial in the last few years I've had a heavy focus on licensing and art for products. Um, and I like to describe my work usually as whimsically awkward or awkwardly whimsical. Uh, it's usually got a big focus on kind of offbeat characters um, and also color and pattern. Oh, cool. Um, have you always wanted to be an illustrator or an artist? I was I was always a creative kid. I wanted to be artistic in some sort, um, in some sort of way. And actually, my brother was sort of the artist of the family. I, he was the one who was drawing all the time. And I kind of, at the age of 12, my, uh, he had a sketchbook. And I kind of was like, I want to have a sketchbook, too. <laughs> Um, sort of just like the little sister tagging along sort of thing and um, sort of it was funny that I was the, end, the one who kind of ended up pursuing an art degree. I actually thought I was going to end up being in apparel. When I was looking at colleges, I thought I was going to go into fashion design mm -hmm. um, and I got into uh, the Rhode Island School of Design and that's where I got my BFA but in illustration, my uh, four-year degree. And the summer before I went to RISD, I tried making a skirt like a very simple skirt it was a wrap skirt there was no buttons or zippers and it was it was a horrible disaster <laughs> and so that kind of made me realize okay maybe apparel is not what I want to go into <laughs> so I thought I was going to go into animation and um, like we've already discussed I have a deep love of characters so that seemed like a natural thing so I um, a lot of times over here when you go to an art school you don't really pick your major until your second year you just kind of take all your drawing classes and your design classes and I went to uh, go to a presentation for the film department that had animation, mm -hmm. got there early and just happened to see the illustration department presentation and absolutely fell in love with it. Um, and then by the time the animation presentation happened, I kind of already made up my mind that I was jumping <laughs> ship and I wanted to do illustration. So I graduated with uh, my degree from RISD and uh, actually, yeah, just ended up doing uh, uh, editorial publishing before I got more interested in licensing and I think for me the the thing was in editorial and publishing I wasn't quite finding my home with my artwork I felt like I was really trying to force myself into a different thing yeah so um giving you guys a lot of information I hope that's okay <laughs> no it's fine it's brilliant <laughs> Uh, but back then, we're talking about, goodness, like 10 years ago, which is kind of crazy. There wasn't, there wasn't, you know, wonderful artist interviews and online resources like, like this and um, weren't classes and stuff. So I, I got my first licensing job with uh, Gallison Mud Puppy mm -hmm. and realized, oh, this is, this is where I belong. I belong in like art licensing and products. And so that started this journey of me trying to pursue those clients. And um, what ended up happening is I, I realized I had to uh, get, get more knowledgeable of the business. And so I took a job at C.R. Gibson in Nashville, uh, where I could actually work at a company that dealt with more surface design and art licensing and kind of just be, you know, in the trenches, so to speak. Yeah. And so after being there for two years and just really taking it all in, I kind of got shot back out and went back to freelance and was lucky enough to, you know, go to Surtex and then also get my, my agent, Jennifer Nelson, artist um, within that same year. So, so yeah, that's that's kind of the the long answer. I always knew I wanted to be artistic, but I think it found it found a while for me to realize where that home was for my art. Yeah, and do you think that um, your art itself has taken a journey, or did you have like your style quite early on? <laughs> yes and no. Yeah, you can <laughs> that. Yep, that uh, heavy nod. <laughs> yes and no. I was one of those people, especially in school. I, I could do I was doing several different things, but my style was was in fact this is kind of crazy, but just because I have it here. Um, oh like my gosh, is that the is work just I was unrecognizable. Doing 
you know, it was art school. Everyone's like moody and dark mm -hmm. and we're all so tormented. And um, <laughs> I, I think it took me a while to be comfortable with the stuff that I did just for fun, just for me and my sketchbook. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely been a journey. Real, the little silly things I make, mm -hmm. like that's me yeah. and people like that. Yeah, do you think that there's, um, I don't know what the word is, I don't know whether it's guilt or, it's almost like, yeah, I guess it is a guilt that something that you are having so much fun just, you know, mindlessly doing in some senses, um, you know, you're not tortured over it and it's not something that's painful for you to do. It's like there's almost yeah. a guilt that, you know, it shouldn't be this fun and this easy for me to do this. <laughs> exactly. And I think part of it is um, when we're when there's something that we do and there's sort of like an effortlessness to it. And other people go, oh, that's so cool that you do it. And you're thinking like, well, but I just, I just did it. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't, there wasn't the struggle. I think you know, it was sort of this very like romantic notion that like you said, everything has to be a struggle <laughs> and a fight. And so we figure if there's not that sort of valid, yeah. um, that like that fun little doodle you did, that's not worth anything because there's no, you know, um, you know, sweat involved in it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes I, I see all the time my students, they're, you know, they have a sketchbook and they're squirreling away all this wonderful stuff in it and I'm like this is what you need to do mm -hmm. and they're just like oh but I'm just playing around but yeah definitely what you said <laughs> um, so you mentioned the first deal that you got um, how did you go about doing that did you have a plan in place or did you just kind of fall onto it or what, what happened this is great I was telling someone the story yesterday <laughs> so um, used to live in Providence Rhode Island so I was only a few hours away from New York mm -hmm. and you know people who you know hop, hop on a train or whatever to New York and you shop around your portfolio old school um, trying to set up another round of interviews for a trip I was going to New York and I had a kind of a colleague um, who had given me some names um, one of the best things you can do if you're trying to sort of you know contact an art director and maybe you feel like you're coming out of the blue if you have a middle person someone who's worked with them and you can drop an email and say hey so-and-so said I should contact you I'm just wondering if I can send you my work or have a you know 15 minutes of your time if you're meeting them in person so that's what I was doing with um Gallinus in New York um, and they do stationery and stickers and kids products all sort of fun things so um this this art director isn't there anymore so I'm not like you know don't don't worry about that but uh, it's not a bad story but uh, I, I contacted her explaining you know can I can I meet with you for 15 minutes and she was like I really I really don't have uh, the time I'm sorry but if you want to you can send along some samples so of course I felt a little deflated and I was like okay and so I sent like a, a few low res JPEGs and didn't think twice of it and I, within like 30 minutes or an hour she wrote back and she's like do you have a website and again I just thought she's kind of logging away my materials and so I sent it along and then within an hour she was like I actually do have a job for you <laughs> and, uh, I, and part of me was like you, were sneaky. you said you didn't have any projects <laughs> um, no, it's great she was it's a wonderful company and, and you know she she it was a wonderful project to work on so it was I don't have it right here um, but it was a, a princess sticker book mm -hmm. And so I did like a bunch of characters, uh, fantasy related, and uh, and it was a lot of fun. But that was my first licensing job, and it was it was a quick turnaround. But it, it really it really uh, had a light bulb go off mm -hmm. because I think I think before the editorial stuff and the stuff I was getting, it was very moody and serious, and I was trying to figure out like my art just kind of people enjoy it and it makes people smile. Where is that venue that that makes sense? And that's when I realized, oh, art licensing. That that's where I need to go. Mm -hmm. Cool. And do you know what what made you join those dots? I used to do a um, art sale that my college put on. It was a, a pretty big thing that alumni did as well. So it wasn't like a, a little student show. It actually was like a big event. Okay. I just kind of stumbled on, I was making ears and stickers. And um, I one time just threw like a bunch of spare paintings I had. And it was just like, oh, I'll sell it for like 75 bucks or something. Like the shirts and stuff weren't selling as much, but like the original paintings that I was selling for much more, just the characters flew off the shelf. And that 
made me realize, oh my gosh, like, okay, people just want the characters. Mm -hmm. And I started doing that where every oh. little five by seven gouache paintings, um, and, and uh, it, I got such a good reaction guys, to the fact that there was a not only a market for it, but I was I always just be more like children's. Yeah. And I was surprised how many, you know, teenagers, students and older people, um, you know, how, how much of a range that uh, of demographics my art was actually appealing to. Yeah. So that was a, a huge, in a way, like a big focus group. Mm -hmm. So... Um, if we just go back then, so if you could give us a bit of an insight into what a week looks like, what a typical day looks like, idea in how you kind of organize about your work. Sure. I'm kind of like working that too. <laughs> um, I'm a little bit of a night owl, so uh, part of it is me trying to desperately wake up, trying to get back in that. It, it's funny because it's like always a blessing. People are like, oh, you can control your day, but it means you have to be very organized. Mm -hmm. So I get up and... Um, I usually have sort of like a morning shift and an afternoon shift. So if I'm working at home, I do all my kind of administrative stuff, like emails and, and things like that. I try to do that in the morning. Um, then I'm usually working anywhere for an hour or two on art making. Um, do do lunch and then walk my dog. Um, <laughs> and then kind of try to go back for an afternoon shift and, and work till five. And sometimes, depending on the project, I'll go back in the studio at night, but I'm really trying not to do that as much. Mm -hmm. One of the things after I left my full-time design job is I'm an extrovert and I just miss people. I have a full studio at home, but I really enjoy the community. And so in Nashville, we have something here called The Warren. Uh, it's got a lot of great illustrators like Rebecca Green and Katie Turner and uh, just a, a whole crew of people that are really um, being rock stars at what they do. So I actually started going in there like about three or four days a week oh, cool. to work with these other artists, even though I technically don't have to. And so that's been good because it's been kind of a good energy, but also it provides structure. And if you work from home, if your audience works from home, that's one of the challenging things is that kind of weekends and weeks sort of start to blur together. Yeah. And you can start to feel kind of adrift and you're in your pajamas seven days straight <laughs> and you don't, you don't feel like a human being anymore. Um, and, it, and it can put a, a big crunch on your creativity. So for me, um, it's worth just that little extra money to rent that space in that studio. And it's, it really has become a second home for me. Yeah. It's cool. Do you get to leave your things there or do you have to pack up every time you leave? Is it, how does it work? I, I have, that's a really good question. Um, the space actually has two types of membership, like a permanent workspace. And then I'm a community table member. So I kind of bring in, I have my laptop and my Wacom tablet. Some days if I'm working in a sketchbook or painting, I bring in that stuff. But yeah, I kind of come in, work at the community table. And then at the end of the day, I, I schlep my stuff out. <laughs> Um, and I do have a full studio at home, yeah. so I, I, I do want that flexibility. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So how do you structure your days and your weeks? Like, how much time do you give to social media, actually designing, sending emails, follow-up, sending art out, things like that? How Do you have a balance, a structure, or anything like that? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm constantly trying to figure out how to improve that as well and streamline it. Um, I would say... A typical day, I spend anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half on email. Um, I try to update my Instagram every day or every other day. Right now, I have a lot of client work, for instance, so I can't really show that. Um, so sometimes it's a balance of doing little exercises and posting them or um, going in my archive and finding something that's sort of a favorite piece but not too old. Um, and then art making, I think uh, the main goal, like obviously I think we measure our productivity on how much art we make in a day. And sometimes I can feel a little sad if, if I might have a really busy day, but only end up spending like four hours making art. And I feel a little, a little bummed, but I have to remember that all that other stuff is really important too and part of the big picture. Yeah. So if I'm working at home, I usually get a solid five to six hours. If I'm at my group studio, the Warren in Nashville, the other artists I'm probably getting uh more like five to anywhere from five to seven just depending if I'm eating lunch in the studio or things like that okay. trying trying <laughs> <laughs> I think it, I guess it changes as well depending on what you've got going on and what the focus is if you like you say if you've got client work then that's going to 
take priority over, you know, spending less time on social media, I guess. Yes, and that's been one of the challenges too. Is um, uh, I've been working my agent on that actually. Is is right now I'm, I'm very thankful because I do have a lot of great client work that I'm working on. But uh, especially for us that might be doing uh, pattern design and and art, you know, stuff for our licensing, I still have to find time for that. And sometimes I can feel a little bit. Of, you were talking about guilt earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I want to take a morning or a day and say I'm just gonna, you know, I have plenty of time with this client job. I'm just gonna take this day and work on something for to shop around the clients for art licensing. You do kind of have to wrestle with your mind and not feel like you're ignoring your client when when you are being responsible. Yeah. <laughs> so with the work that you get from um, from your agent, do you also go and find stuff yourself then as well? Is that is it a case of you have to still put in a lot of work on your own to try and find work? Yeah, I think, um, you know, all agents work differently, first of all. So, you know, some only handle certain markets um, and then don't deal with other ones. Mm -hmm. Um, Jennifer, uh, she is, she's great. Um, She's (laughs) like my bat phone. Um, But... She's she for the most part is is taking care of working working with clients that I've already had and then finding new clients um, finding jobs that and clients that I never knew even existed. <laughs> um, but I do it. I, you know, a lot of times if you sign up with an agent, you have what's called house accounts, and so that means people you already have a relationship with. Those are people I get to keep. Mm-hmm. Um, so with those clients, um, I will you know just work one on one with them. And then sometimes, like, there's there's art directors I've grown very close with and friendly with, um, and so I might have a piece of work, and I'll just go ahead and forward it to that art director and say, hey, I just made this and I thought of you. Mm-hmm. And then that art director might say, oh, I love this. I'll, I'll go contact Jennifer and get, get it started. So mm-hmm. sometimes if I have that relationship with a client, I'll go ahead and just, you know, talk to them. But definitely with uh, Instagram, even things like newsletters were definitely definitely encouraged not forced but encouraged to yeah kind of bring in people and attention yeah yeah because I think um, I've heard it said quite a few times you know that a lot of people think that getting an agent that's like you've made it that is it you can sit back and everything's going to come your way but a lot of people say you know you still have to put in the work and obviously putting the work to give to them but you also have to work at things like your social media and keeping yourself out there and keeping learning and you know growing I guess yeah and I have I have friends who I'm very lucky like I have a lot of friends who have agents that are kicking butt and it really is a life changer for them it really is I won't lie but then I have other friends who they were with agents and it wasn't a good fit or they weren't getting jobs that they wanted mm-hmm. or they just found them being like this isn't working for me so you know I definitely don't want to paint the picture that everything's perfect once you get an agent um, it's funny because I think you know we always have like these goals for us like when I finally get that first contract I'll, I'll feel like I made it or when I finally you know get that agent I'll feel like I made it I haven't had that feeling yet I think <laughs> when I actually got Jennifer I actually put more pressure on myself because mm-hmm. um, it was a huge relief but it was also like oh hey better bring it don't mess it up <laughs> uh, and and so yeah I kind of in a way even just wants like you to it makes you pump yourself up more and want to do even better um, agents are, she can only do her job if I'm doing my job. Yeah. The more work I give her, the more ammunition she has to find people. Um, so yeah, you definitely have to put in that energy to get the results out of an agent. Do you ever get um, scared or, or just, I don't know, maybe designer's block or anything like that? And if you do, how do you address that and move forward? Yeah, uh, so yes, all the time. <laughs> um, that's one of the things I love being in a, in a communal space because you have illustrators that talk about this all the time and you realize that all of us usually are just running around <laughs> with like imposter syndrome. And <laughs> Yeah, so I, I feel like every time I get hired, I'll be very honest, sometimes when I get hired for a job, I always have that little voice that's like, 
oh my gosh, you got hired by mistake. And they're going to they're gonna figure out you're not that good. But you fooled them. Um, and you almost, you almost feel like you're still trying to win them over. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's I joke to people, but it's true. Like sometimes I get so rattled. I have gone to my own website and Instagram to remind myself what I do. Um, <laughs> and to look at my art and be like, oh, okay, that's not that bad. So, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so when I'm feeling, um, if you're if you're working on something and you don't have the luxury of walking away, uh, one trick I like to do is just, if, uh, change, I call it change your input, meaning, um, you know, whatever you're listening to or bringing in. Because if you want to change your output, if you're in a rut or it's just not happening, then change your input. So I have... You know, I listen to music, I listen to podcasts, I want words in my ears, music. There's certain music I listen to when I'm brainstorming versus certain music I'm listening to when I'm just kind of doing the grunt work. Uh, And there's certain music I use when I'm doing email. Um, So sometimes I realize that my brain is just fatigued by whatever I'm listening to. That's kind of like a, a good quick way of just snapping you out of your zone if you need it. What have been some of your um, favorite projects or clients? Um, Some of my favorite ones were ones that I just felt like were really different or really kind of um, let me do what I do pretty well. So one of my first jobs from Surtex was, um, I'm going to try holding them up, but I did these. um, Uh, Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so these were... (laughs) know your Santas and they also became like Santa's lesser known reindeers Uh, so these were 12 ornaments of of Santa's reindeers and um, elves and so we have like astronaut Santa and this is Schmoozer uh, the reindeer who's on his cell phone with a martini and says Santa Santa baby let's talk branding Uh, and these are just things I remember doodling at my old job on a post-it note like after lunch I was just like oh I have a silly idea for all these different Santa's. If anyone out there is a fan of The Far Side by Gary Larson, there's this famous comic that's it, it's Know Your Bugs, and it just it has all your bugs, but it says like Tim, Diane. Um, so kind of just riffing off that humor. Um, I had a book with um, Klutz come out. Oh. And so this is just all these great like how tos and. Um, this was just a really thing to the design, um, and I did all the illustrations, but it's just, you know, just like sunshine and happiness. It's like I get- <laughs> How long did that project take? This project, I, oh goodness, maybe, maybe I had from start to finish sketches and everything like three months. <laughs> Uh, and then one of the coolest ones, just because it's like the coolest sample I have. Oh goodness, this is larger. So this is one of those. Uh, oh yes, I love this so much. This is my my suitcase, <laughs> and I don't know if I can make it happen, but like the wheels light up. <laughs> yeah, we got it. <laughs> um, so this was like the first collection of art I actually made when I went back to freelance for art licensing. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it's just like, that. Like that's so cool <laughs> to be wheeling around a piece of luggage yeah. with, you know, your art on it. So that, <laughs> that one was definitely very different. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, if you could go back in time and um, meet with your 10 years younger self and just give one key piece of advice or insight or tell yourself to avoid something, is there anything that you would say? Um, I'm, yeah, it's probably probably more like 12 years. I'm going to go back to college, <laughs> um, which was only two years ago. No, uh, <laughs> it, I might be repeating myself just a little bit, but definitely I would tell myself your art does not have to look like everyone else's. Mm-hmm. And I think it's funny because I'm, I'm so happy that when I was in college, I wasn't, you know, we didn't have Pinterest. We didn't have Instagram. We had blogs and we had Google search. But that was it. But that classroom college environment definitely mimics, I think, what people go through with like Instagram now and stuff where you're surrounded by all this beautiful art and it's a fine line between inspiration and almost being an overwhelming force that starts to influence you in negative ways. Mm -hmm. 
um, and kind of like I alluded to earlier, I was doing several different things. I was surrounded by crazy talented people. A lot of them who ended up doing very lovingly rendered and realistic stuff for like video game industries and comic books. So beautiful. And here I am doing like, it's Santa. Um, <laughs> what's really funny is I, I have very few of my final projects from college, but I have all my sketchbooks. And I think that's very telling um, that my, my sketchbooks and my teachers loved my sketchbooks, but I was never confident enough to, like we're talking about, it, it felt like fun. It felt like it was too easy. So I never brought that to my final work. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't until after graduation that I, I finally realized to trust that um, and and kind of started that journey. So that would be the advice I would have is to kind of start experimenting with that earlier. Um, and uh, it, and I, but I don't, I want to say this, like I don't, I don't regret kind of my creative education, my upbringing, because I, I think I did have to kind of go through all of that. Um, I tell people sometimes figuring out what you don't want to do is just as important as figuring out what you do want to do. And with the old work I was making, I realized I wasn't having any fun making it. I I only liked it when it was done and when people told me it was good and I felt validated. Yeah. Uh, Which is a very dangerous place to put yourself as a creative. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, that that would be the advice I would give myself. Okay. And are there any um, clients or any projects that are still on your wish list? Yeah, I would would love to work with Chronicle just because they put out such beautiful products. Um, I would love to work with Blue Q. Blue Q, if you're listening. <laughs> like, they're, they have such fun, quirky, offbeat products. And uh, I would I would love to do stuff for them. If you haven't checked out their website, you'll probably, they work with a lot of uh, great artists. Um, but I feel like I'm on the same wavelength as them. Um, and I, I know everyone says anthropology. <laughs> I don't think anthropology is going to need any unicorns with boom boxes soon. But <laughs> oh. I, it's definitely a dream client because it's right now it's not happening. Like I totally realize my aesthetic is different, but that would be really cool. You never know when they're gonna go down that road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> okay, so a new role that's been cast and artists are only allowed to have three tools or products in their possession. What are your three things? Okay, uh, it would be uh, definitely a pencil, paper, and the third one, the third one I'm going to lump Photoshop and my Wacom tablet together, if that's okay. Oh, I think no. that's cheating. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, I guess, no, I guess you can't really have got nothing. Well, actually, you need a computer because you, what are you running Photoshop in this Wacom? So, so I guess it would be a like computer. So I guess you're going straight to jail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if I only had, oh, that's painful because the, the artist and the teacher me is like pencil and paper. But if I had to be honest, I, so in that case, if, if we're really going to get that specific, we'll say my computer, my Photoshop program, and my Wacom tablet. Okay. As long as the stylus and the tablet count as one thing, we're yeah. not going to get like two. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to go Nazi <laughs> on you. Yeah, that's <laughs> really is painful for me to say because I, you know, there's so much about like just hand-drawn stuff but mm-hmm. if, if we're really gonna yeah <laughs> so what is your actual design process? do you start from sketches how do you how do you work um i it, de- it can depend if i'm doing something um like just like a flower pattern or lettering I've gotten to the point now where I'm comfortable enough on my tablet um, that I'll kind of like sketch in Photoshop. I'll do a, a Photoshop sketch layer and then kind of work on top of it. Yeah. Uh, if I'm working client work. I still like to work with pencil on the paper because I do think my muscle memory or just, I, you know, it just switches something in my brain. Um, I'm kind of, that's still my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. So I, I s- still sketch there. Um, and then when I find something I like, um, I scan it in, um, and then I basically, with my digital, I have a bunch of digital brushes. Some of them look like scratchy pencils. Some of them look like ink or gouache. Um, but then I start to go over it and I usually have, for everything you see of mine, there usually is a layer in Photoshop that's just the line work. Mm -hmm. And then I usually have a layer underneath and that's my color. So that's, that's usually how I set up my files. Cool. 
Um, okay, what, um, where do you tend to find inspiration? Do you have a set routine that you have going on? Do you use trends? Yeah, I um, trends, I, I definitely pay attention to them. Uh, I don't always land comfortably in them. Uh, and there's so many, that's okay. Uh, but like, for instance, I do, foxes are big and I do a good fox. So I'll <laughs> stick with that. I learned very early when hedgehogs are big, I, I, I do a horrible hedgehog. <laughs> so, um, you know, don't be afraid to be honest with yourself and just say, you know what, I'm going to let other people, when there's like a thousand other people that are doing really kick-ass hedgehogs, mm -hmm. I'll let them do that. And I'll stay over here and do the trend that I do really well. Um, so my inspiration, this uh, this is interesting because I realize I, I love characters. And one of the things I've realized over time is I am very much inspired by characters in sort of misfits in real life and subcultures. When I was younger, I really, I don't have any tattoos or something, but it's really funny. I'm a big fan of tattoo culture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, street art, graffiti, uh, um, that sort of stuff really interests me. Stuff that may not even be attributed to a, a name per se, but more of a movement. Mm -hmm. um, folk art, um, global textiles, like folk art from a long time ago, where it's more modern stuff. Um, and since I love characters so much, I'm very attracted to you know, things like uh, the characters that come up in burlesque, or I love drag queens, I love RuPaul's Drag Race, um, <laughs> uh, you know, but, th but those sort of things, those personas, um, I even went a couple days ago back to a photo shoot that I just found so inspiring, which was um, Moroccan motorcycle girl gangs. So you have these women in this very, like, traditional garb, and then with these, like, very, uh, you know, quirky sunglasses, and they're on these motorcycles, and it's just such, like, a clash of cultures. Yeah. Uh, that I, just, I just found it, like, so cool. Uh, and you go back to, like, the, the girl gangs of Tokyo 1970s. Like, there's just so many weird little niches like that for people in real life and I think I get a lot of my inspiration pulling from from those cultures okay cool and are there any designers um past or present who have really inspired you designers illustrators any anyone like that designers wise um right now I'm really into I haven't written down I'm probably gonna pronounce this wrong <laughs> But my friend, my dear friend Sam Smith, who uh, has a wonderful blog called The Poster Boys, um, just going to give him a shout out. <laughs> he, he introduced me to a designer, a Cuban designer called Eduardo Munoz Fox, and um, probably saying that completely wrong. <laughs> but uh, he he has such a cool style. It's very, it's it reminds me a lot of my own work, uh, just done in a much more sophisticated way. It's bold use of color, characters, there's sort of this like effortless line the way he does fonts it's got like a very gritty hand on feel and it's but it's very like whimsical and appealing um so th that's someone i'm really admiring right now if i really go back to my my influences i have to go farther back to like egon chile who was um an artist who did a lot of very uh crazy line work um uh, very distorted figures even my figures they they're cartoony and fun but there's sort of like a natural distortion to them mm -hmm. other inspirations i have is egon chile who uh was kind of the, the late 1800s early 1900s but he did these uh, gorgeous very bold uh line drawings of women who were kind of like a little funky and a little edgy very offbeat um usually very kind of distorted figures but it's kind of funny to see how that's influenced my my line work my characters are much more cute than his but they still have sort of this very kind of wonky distorted line um name of Yoshitaka Amano um who is a Japanese artist who's done a, a ton of art for animations and um other productions but I I learned about him because my brother and I used to play a video game called Final Fantasy and he did all the concept art and they're just very beautiful ink drawings very effortless and highly stylized uh, these artists who work on stylizing environments and characters, like they've had a huge influence on me. When you're long gone, years and years and years from now, what is it that you hope people remember you for? I hope they remember me as someone who is happy. <laughs> Really, in the end, um, someone who did what they wanted to and hopefully brought happiness to others. Um, I once told someone that 
I think success can be measured in many different ways. But for me, if I could go back in time and tell my 12 year old self what I do now, and if they thought it was really, really cool, <laughs> then I know I'm doing something right. Like if I, what I do, and then it's like, all right, I think I think I did a good job. But I kind of just want to look look back and have that feeling of just I set up to kind of make the 12 year old me. Do you think you're doing a good job so far? I think so, yeah. I think my 12 <laughs> I agree. <laughs> okay, cool. I have grilled you enough. Um, I'll add links to where people can find you, but um, if you just want to say where they can find you and the best way to get hold of you. Sure. Um, my website is laurenlowen.com. Uh, it needs an update, so so be gentle. Um, <laughs> my Instagram is Lauren Minko Lowen. Um, so Lauren Minko, M-I-N-C-O, Lowen. Jennifer Nelson Artist is my agent, and you can find, um, that's just the name of our website as well. Um, And so you can also find my work by looking her up. Cool. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, And I'm sorry I've gone off script, but um, it was very, very interesting speaking to you. (laughs) No, I loved it. And and I hope hope all your listeners got something out of it. I'm sure they have, yeah. (laughs)